We are at war, and that is very clear. So for all of us, uh, we have to protect ourselves from Satan and the demons, and the spiritual fight is on to the finish. Working out our salvation with fear and trembling is essential. Under the headship of Christ Jesus, the members of the governing body provide helpful direction to organize Jehovah's people worldwide. As a world conqueror, figuratively, he has plundered captives and has given them as gifts to the congregations. In 1919, Jesus appointed the faithful slave over all his belongings, all his earthly kingdom interests. When did Jesus appoint the faithful slave over his domestics? That question was answered after he and his father came and inspected the temple, or spiritual arrangement for worship, from 1914 to the early part of 1919. From 1964 to 1971, the governing body supervised an extensive Bible study project that examined, among many other subjects, how the first-century Christian congregation functioned. Some of these changes have come very quickly, and we want to commend you for your obedience to theocratic direction. They promptly made adjustments to bring the organization into fuller harmony with the elder arrangement. Whether the direction we receive comes from the governing body, the branch, our circuit overseer, or the elders, we want to follow that direction closely. What is our role at Bethel? Why are we talking about this to the Bethel family? Because we are the support group. We are Kingdom Support Services. Since 1992, the governing body has appointed experienced, mature Christian elders to help its committees carry out their work. These helpers provide valuable support to the governing body. In any war, in any war, we have to have a supply line. If that supply line is cut off from the front lines, those front lines people are in trouble. And in any war, the idea is to cut off, the enemy wants to cut off that supply line, wants to sever the supply line. It demoralizes the troops. That's our job. We are the supply line. But if ever that evil slave says in his heart, my master is delaying, and he starts to beat his fellow slaves, and to eat and drink with the confirmed drunkards, the master of that slave will come on a day that he does not expect, and in an hour that he does not know and he will punish him with the greatest severity and will assign him his place with the hypocrites. There is where his weeping and the gnashing of his teeth will be. Notice that Jesus introduces the warning with the words, If ever. One scholar says that in the Greek text, this passage for all practical purposes is a hypothetical condition. In effect, Jesus was saying, if the faithful and discreet slave were ever to mistreat his fellow slaves in these ways, this is what the master will do when he arrives. To date, the Jehovah's Witnesses organizations, which have over 1,800 accusations of sexual abuse against it, have not signed up to the scheme. Has the Victorian government stopped all funding to Jehovah's Witnesses related organizations? And if not, why not? So how will this affect our theocratic activities. As I've previously brought this to the attention of the House of the last few months and years, the Jehovah's Witnesses organisations have gone to great lengths to sell assets, restructure their business and charitable activities, consolidate their property portfolio and send vast amounts of cash overseas, all in an effort to reduce their exposure to claims against them of sexual abuse. There are now 155 registered Jehovah's Witness organizations in Victoria. Will the government now strip them of the tax benefits they receive? We've even had to make adjustments to the adjustments. It is unavoidable that causes for stumbling should come. Nevertheless, woe to the one through whom they come. It would be more advantageous for him if a millstone were hung from his neck and he were thrown into the sea than for him to stumble one of these little ones. And do you see yourselves as Jehovah God's spokespeople on earth? 
Uh, that, I think, would seem to be quite presumptuous to, to say that uh, we are the only spokesperson that God is using. I tried to help you. You did not come back to me. You did not come back to me. You did not come back to me. I'm trying to help. You didn't come back to me. So there's only one option. You leave me one decision to make. It's military confrontation. And that's the way it will be in our day. There's one option, military confrontation. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and expel demons in your name and perform many powerful works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Get away from me, you workers of lawlessness. Get ready to meet your God.